You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, from Portage High School, Daily Dodge TV, and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam present Beaver Dam High School Golden Beaver Girls Basketball. And tonight it is a playoff showdown, a Division II sectional semifinal as the Golden Beavers get set to face their rivals, the Watertown Goslings. Hi again, everybody. Mike Tronson with you inside the gym, and I'm joined by my good friend and partner, Tim Haldeman. Justin Wilski, a.k.a. The Ninja, is our on-site videographer and engineer, assisted by Ember, and Jack Wilski is back at the 1430 ESPN Beaverdam Studios engineering our radio simulcast. And we welcome you in to this playoff broadcast, which is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaverdam Unified School District. Tonight's game is also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM and Beaver Dam, White Construction, and Pizza Ranch. Welcome into our pregame show, everyone. We are about oh, 23 minutes away from the tip of this Division II sectional semifinal. You've got Beaver Dam, the number one seed in the bracket, taking on third seeded Watertown. Beaver Dam at 20 and 6. Watertown coming in at 17 and 9. And the Goslings, let's talk about them first of all. Tim Haldeman are really excited to be here. This is the first time since 2012 that Watertown has advanced to the sectional round. I mean, these girls that are playing tonight for the Goslings, they were uh, barely on solid foods the last time that Watertown made it to a sectional, but uh, they're excited nonetheless. Very true, Mike, and I learned all of that this morning at about uh, 6.50 when I, uh, you know, just opening my eyes to you and Wade and you had that wonderful, uh, you know, wake up uh, sports good morning show on uh, the WBEV morning show. Man, that was outstanding, and I paid attention, and I'm going like, you know what? I think I'm going to go join Mike tonight. I need to uh, get out and, uh, you know, get a little basketball fix as if I haven't. Oh, my goodness, we got uh, Karen Brisky in the, uh, in the house. <laughs> Karen, great to see you. Uh-oh, hugs all around. Here we go. Karen, great to see you. But... Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is always great. And, yeah, you mentioned uh, Watertown. This is new and different to them. These young ladies uh, are not accustomed to this, whereas Beaver Dam, of course, this is an annual affair. So, uh, you know, going to be something different. And uh, we'll see how they, uh, the, the Goslings uh, handle the jitters right off the get-go. But these two teams very familiar with each other. No doubt about it. I mean, they're obviously rivals. They're in the same conference. They played each other twice this season. Now, Beaver Dam won both of those matchups. As we look at it, the first time around was back in November. At the start of the season, it was a defensive struggle. Beaver Dam won 44-27. Riley Zarnecki led the Golden Beavers with 14 in that game. Alex Johnson, the high scorer for Watertown, with nine. In January, they played a second time. Beaver Dam, a 68-45 win on January 23rd. Uh, it was Seattle. Ani Salatel with 20 to lead the way for the Golden Beavers that night. Gabby Wilkie with 18, Emma Jolka 10. Meanwhile, Alex Johnson had 16 for the Goslings. So, yes, these teams very familiar with one another. And I'm going to ask you, Tim, because I asked, I talked about this with both coaches, Matt Stolberg of Watertown and Braden Went of, of Beaver Dam. But, you know, there's, there's that old adage, something about having to play a team three times. So if you're Beaver Dam, even though you, you beat them twice in the regular season, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking you got to throw the records out. you got to throw the results out because, boy, in the playoffs, anything can happen. Well, very true, and uh, I can guarantee you that the Beaver Dam coaching staff, as the buzzer just went off and these uh, two clubs are just uh, going on the floor. And uh, But um, where was I, Mike? Thank you. 
help me out. You were starting to talk about the, the, having to play a team three times. Oh, okay. Um, the, the one thing that the Beaver Dam coaching staff uh, is guarding against is that, that's complacency. You know, these kids are 16, 17, 18 years old, and uh, I don't care how long you've played this game. It happens in the NFL. It happens in Major League Baseball. It happens in, at every level that, uh, hey, you know, if, if you think you're going to just walk out there and uh, you're going to, you know, throw your uh, shoes on the floor and the, and the ball's going to go in the basket, it just doesn't work that way, you know? And, and like I said, going back to what I first said, and that was the first couple, three minutes are going to be so, so important. Watertown has to uh, understand that, that they belong on this floor here tonight. This is a step up. And every time you take a step up, it, it's it's just that you you got to uh, you, you got to somehow or another make the grade. You gotta you gotta elevate yourself, and and I'm sure that they've uh, been chatting about that for the last five days ever since they've knew known that they were going to be in this game. And uh, so uh, you know there's there's a lot of psychology going on both ways actually as far as the coaching staffs go. Watertown has nothing to lose, very honestly. Those young ladies, and I guarantee you, the coaching staff, they're all in agreement. Hey, we got nothing to lose. This team, uh, the Beaver Dam's got a, uh, uh, a pedigree that's a, a mile and a half long. Hey, let's go and uh, relax and have a good time and enjoy it. So having said that, can I infer from your comments that you feel the pressure's on Beaver Dam, not on Watertown? Uh, yeah, I, I honestly truly believe that. Now, and, and then the other thing that goes with that, Mike, there's another end of this bracket that comes Saturday, okay? Looming. It's called Pewaukee. From what everybody tells me, Pewaukee is uh, the real deal from what everybody's saying. And uh, here again, you know, let's face it, sometimes young kids do look ahead, you know? It's, it's hard not to sometimes. So, yeah, I'd say a little more pressure on Beaver Dam. Initially, right off the get-go, if all of a sudden there's a lid on the hoop, Right off the uh, right off the beginning, and uh, you know you get a couple of, of bad fouls on uh, a, on a one or two players that are very uh, instrumental to the game. All of a sudden, things are going just to the opposite direction. The longer Watertown can stay in the game, the better chance they have. Needless to say, both of these teams are playing really good basketball right now. Watertown has won six in a row coming into this one. Beaver Dam, they've won nine out of their last. 10. This is going to be a dandy tonight. We're glad you're with us here on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Right now, we will step aside. When we come back, we'll continue our pregame show. And up next, you'll hear comments from the head coaches from both of these schools right after this two minute break. We're back in two minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. We are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. 
we have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for your home for the best sales, service, and selection. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And we continue our pregame programming. We're back inside Portage High School. Mike Tronson standing by with Matt Stolberg. He's the head coach of the Goslings. And Coach March Madness is always an exciting time of year. But, uh, you know, for your team to, to get back to the sectionals for the first time in 12 years, is there a little extra bounce in the step right now with you and, and the girls? I'd imagine there would be. Yeah, I think so. We, um, we've been working really hard. I mean, every year we try to, you know, peak in playoff time, and we feel that most of the time we do. It's just we've had some really tough close losses in these games over the past seven years, and then finally we put together a game where we, uh, we broke through. And, um, you know, like my, my, I teach fifth grade. My fifth grade students weren't even alive the last time a Watertown team's been in the section. It's been a long time for the girls and a long time for the boys. So I think we're excited for the community. That It's been a fun week with everybody, you know, um, you know, getting excited for it, and I think it's just, uh, I don't know if it's fully sunk in with the girls yet, but I think they're excited, and uh, yeah, we're definitely proud of them. Back in early February, you dropped a game to the, a very good Oregon team, and at the time, that I believe that was your fourth loss in a row. Kind of a, a low point, maybe you'd say, in the season, but you haven't lost since. You've won six in a row, had the big win in the regional final last week. What's changed over the last month? I, I know one thing, you've gotten healthy. That, that, that certainly has helped, hasn't it? Yeah, we actually, I mean, we were actually healthy at that point, and it was, it was after that that we got unhealthy, but then actually what, you know, what the injuries did is kind of forced us to adjust some things, and, um, and the kids responded well, and then, uh, you know, a lot of it, too, is we, that was a, a, a stretch where we played, you know, four phenomenal teams, and yeah. so, um, and, and after that, we were able to, to recover a little bit, but I think it really, the story of the season has been, we've been able to take our lumps and get better from it, and not get too down on ourselves or anything like that, because we knew that, regardless of the, you know, the record, you come into the playoffs, everybody's got the same record, it doesn't matter at that point, so, um, yeah, I think we just took what we could from those games and got a little bit better, and in some of those games, even the Oregon game, I don't think the score reflected, we, we did a lot of good things, um, you know, we turned them over 25 times and they beat us by about 30, which is like an anomaly. But we knew there were some good things we could take from it. And uh, if we just stayed positive, we could get better through it. Looking at a lot of the scores from recent weeks, you've really held teams down in a lot of cases. Did you guys, you know, adjust anything or make maybe make a renewed effort to really focus in on and lock in on defense? I think... Um, yeah, maybe. I, I think, uh, you know, we had to adjust some things based on, on injuries, and now we're somewhat healthy again. So we, um, you know, obviously we, we typically do the same type of stuff. Um, I, I, don't, I, not, I, I, would, I would like to say we did, but and I was more so just staying the course um, and kind of believing in what we were doing and just reinforcing some of the stuff that we've been working on throughout the whole year. And then, you know, our, our coaching staff works super hard scouting and, um, and really doing things player-specific, and I think that helped us during that stretch too. How about on the offensive side as we look at that? Do you like the balance where it is right now? I think so. I mean, we've got a number of kids that can lead us in scoring. We've had a lot of different, uh, you know, uh, leading scorers this year, and a lot of that depends on matchups. And even on, uh, you know, on Saturday, there was some size uh, matchups that we could take advantage of. And then Ellie's really come on strong the last couple of weeks and been really aggressive for us. Um, and when she's scoring, then we're in a really good place. So, yeah, we've got a number of different kids that can step up at different times just based on the flow of the game and, and their matchups. Well, this opponent tonight needs no introduction. This is the third time you're going to play Beaver Dam this year. They got you the first two times. What needs to happen tonight to uh, to get them this time around? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I, you know, the, the game plan is not drastically different than it would have been the first two times. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of secrets with what either of us do, but um, I think it really comes down to us limiting live ball turnovers and taking away transition points, uh, making sure that we're rebounding and holding them to one shot in the, ha in the half court and really trying to force everything to be difficult that way. And, um, and then on the offensive end, making sure that we're taking really good, high-quality shots um, with the right kids in the right spots and then just staying patient and not getting sped up uh, which can happen at times when you're playing a team, the caliber of Beaver Dam. So, yeah, I think um, I think a lot of it's going to be keeping the pace where we need it to be and then um, really just forcing uh, difficult shots, keeping them off the foul line, keeping them from you know getting transition layups, that sort of thing. Matt, I really appreciate the time. I wish you and the girls good luck tonight. Thanks, as always. Do appreciate it. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, that's Matt Stolberg, head coach of Watertown. We'll step aside back right after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. It's the President's Day sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed with a last call for all you Hemi engine muscle car enthusiasts. The Hemi engine is going away, but we got a couple of beauties that just arrived for some lucky buyers. Take five grand off a brand new 23 Dodge Charger Daytona RT in B5 Blue or a Challenger RTTA package in the beautiful and iconic Plum Crazy. For US UV buyers, Jeep Grand Cherokee Limiteds with the black appearance package, only $46,678. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And we continue our pregame programming. We're back inside Portage High School, and this is Mike Tronson standing by with Braden Wendt. He's the head coach of the Golden Beavers. Braden, congratulations on a trip to the sectional semifinals. And uh, you know what? Uh, your opponent really doesn't need a whole lot of uh, introduction, uh, does it? Because you're playing Watertown tonight for the third time. You've beat them the first two times. What do you got to do to make it three in a row? Well, we just got to look back at the film and see what we did well both those games. Um, we know that we can, despite being a little undersized, we can handle our size well. Uh, we know that we can use our speed to our advantage. And as long as we um, can play to our strengths, uh, we believe the game should play out in our favor. But that means we have to be aggressive on defense. Uh, we can't give them anything easy, no second chance looks, take care of the ball, all that stuff. Even though you beat them twice this season? Is it still a little scary to have to, to go at him again a third time? I'm not, I haven't always been a believer in that. Now, I've been on the wrong receiving end of that a few times as well. But um, like I said, I kind of just believe that we know what strengths we need to play to in a game like this. And, yeah, it's a little scary because, you know, these, these are two teams that are super familiar with each other. We've played each other twice, um, you know, both games we did win by double digits but there were tight parts of that game so you know a few bounces here or there uh, a few less turnovers here or there and who knows how those games differ so it's going to be about the little things tonight as long as we do the little things right I'm not going to be concerned about playing a team three times um, if we have more turnovers than normal give up more offensive rebounds than normal I'll start to get a little concerned about that but as long as we play our style of basketball we'll be okay. It's a neutral site but fairly familiar in the fact that it's another Badger Conference school some of these girls have, have no doubt played in this gym, so um, that probably has to factor in and, and maybe helps a little bit too. Yeah, um, these girls have played in this gym before. They've been in the locker room before, been in the school before, so it's not like it's a brand new site where, um, you know, there's going to be nerves regardless coming into a sectional game, but given the fact that even for Watertown, like both teams have been in this gym before, both teams have played games in this gym before, so there's going to be that sense of familiarity and comfort for a little bit, so um, it should be a good, fun environment tonight. That's what I'm hoping for. Got to like where the team is sitting coming into this one. How did the practices go this week? It sounds like when you were talking off the air that uh, sounds like it was a pretty good week of practice. Yeah, uh, team's in a good spot. Uh, we did a lot of just scouting this week in practice all three days, and uh, team spirits were good. Everyone was given 110%, um, you know, asking questions. They didn't understand something, uh, but everyone was just in the right frame of mind. So, yeah, good week of practice leading up to what is obviously a must-win game tonight. Well, not to uh, put you on the spot, but I know that you and I had talked, and this is the first time as either a coach or player that you've been involved in the sectionals. I know we haven't played the game yet, but it's going to be a little exciting for you too right now, I'd mentioned. Yeah, for sure. Um, never got close as a player, never got close as an assistant coach. So this is my first time being here. Um, luckily, there's like four girls on this team that have been here before, so it's not like the whole team is here for the first time. So we got a little bit of famili familiarity uh, playing in the sectional round. So, yeah, it's super exciting, and I'm just super grateful to still be one of the teams just still in the tournament at this point. 
Yeah, I would imagine it'll be a good atmosphere in here. Beaver Dam not too far away from Portage, so I'm sure you're looking for a, a good crowd and a good atmosphere tonight. Yeah, I'm sure both teams, both Beaver Dam and Watertown, are gonna, they're going to bring pretty big crowds on both ends and hopefully big student sections on both ends. So it um, should be an awesome atmosphere. Braden, I'm looking forward to it. I wish you and the girls a lot of good luck. Thanks for your time, as always. Do appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Go Beavers. All right, that's Braden Went. He's the head coach of Beaver Dam. We'll step aside, and we'll be back right after this on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam and Daily Dodge TV. The winter weather can play havoc on your hands and hair. Fear not, the folks at Wonder Nails and Spa has just a ticket for you. Call 887-4374 and let them pamper you. Let them chase away those winter blues. Let's talk hair. Long, beautiful hair. Shine and glint. Whoa, 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 I digress. The team at Cost Cutters will put a shimmer and shine to your mood, and their retail products are the best in the business. Call 885-0437 today. That's why you hear everyone say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center, and you should too. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. Our national anthem here at Portage High School. Mike Tronson, Tim Haldeman with you on the Daily Dodge TV video stream and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Let's give you the starting lineups for this WIAA Division II sectional semifinal. First for Watertown. The Goslings coached by Matt Stolberg, 17-9 overall record. The guards are Lily Euler, 5'11 senior, along with Ellie Demet, a 5'9 senior. Drew Hendricks, six feet tall and a senior, and Megan Doherty, a 5'10 junior. Rounding out the starters for the Goslings at forward is Alex Johnson, a 6'1 junior. So again, for the Goslings, it's Lily Euler, Ellie Demet, Drew Hendricks, Megan Doherty, and Alex Johnson. Now the starters for Beaver Dam, coached by Braden Went, 20 and six on the year. And the guards are Ani Salatel, I call her Seattle, a 5'11 senior, along with Emma Jolka, a 5'6 sophomore, and Taya Donaldson, a 5'9 sophomore. Forwards include Gabby Wilkie, the 6'2 senior, along with Riley Zarnecki, 5'11, and a senior. So again, for Beaver Dam, it is going to be Ani Salatel, Emma Jolka, Natea Donaldson, Gabby Wilkie, and Riley Zarnecki. For those of you tuned in on radio, if you can't see it, which obviously you can't if you're on radio, Beaver Dam in white jerseys and shorts tonight, green numbers and green and gold trim. Meanwhile, for Watertown, they're in dark blue jerseys and shorts with lighter blue numbers and trim. In the first half of play, Watertown is going to go right to left as Tim Haldeman and I see it. That means that Beaver Dam will go left to right across your radio dial or your Daily Dodge TV video screen. Well, the Beaver Dam Unified School District would like to thank parents and families for their active engagement in the education of their children. BDUSD staff are working hard to make the best of each and every opportunity they have to serve your children. Your partnership in that effort is critical to student success. The BD fam, better together. And when you're faced with a challenge, how you respond determines the real winners. Rural Mutual believes there's something more important than just winning or losing a game. They believe that the team, school, and fans who support their athletes with dignity and class are the true champions. Rural Mutual is the proud sponsor of the WIAA Rural Mutual Insurance Sportsmanship Award since it started in 1965. 
From football to volleyball to soccer to tennis, the award recognizes more than team sportsmanship. It recognizes that sportsmanship matters in your community as well. Visit ruralmutual.com slash WIAA and see how our team and your community can work together to be true champions. Don't forget, send us an email during the broadcast tonight, sports at dailydodge.com, sports at dailydodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. Maybe you want to say hello to Tim Haldeman or Ninja or Jack or Ember. We would love to hear from you. And here we go, Mr. Haldeman. Exciting stuff. Arch Madness, one leap day early. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Gabby Wilkie will jump it at center for Beaver Dam. And the tap is won by the Golden Beavers. And here we go in this sectional semifinal. Gabby Wilkie near the top of the key to the free throw line, pulls up, jumpers on the way, and she scores just like that. 2 nothing Beaver Dam. We are 13 seconds into the contest. Beaver Dam's got the lead already. Watertown started out in a uh, zone trap in the front court, and now Beaver Dam picking up uh, Watertown full court. Here's a drive by Demet. She goes baseline, runs into Donaldson, now kicks it back out. Here's Euler. Euler, left elbow, sends it up top now for Alex Johnson. Johnson feeds Henricks out on the right side, back to Euler, looking into the post, left side shot high off the glass, it won't go for Johnson, tried to get her own rebound, and instead it was deflected and taken by Jolka. Throws it ahead, there's Seattle in the right corner, up to Wilkie now, Wilkie draws a double team, fires it over to Seattle, back to Wilkie on the give and go, she's near the right block, double teamed again, they go around the horn, left side corner three, it's no good for Zarnecki, rebound tipped out of bounds, last touch they say by Beaverdam and Natea Donaldson, so 58 seconds are gone here in the first half, it's 2-0 in favor of the Golden Beavers, Gosling's going to get the ball right here. Beaver Dam moved the ball extremely well against that zone. You have to move it quickly. They found a wide open jump shot. Didn't quite go down. Winner of this game goes to the sectional championship game Saturday at 4 o'clock. And the opponent likely going to be Pewaukee. I'd be shocked if it wasn't. And we've got a traveling violation on Watertown. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Watertown both trips offensively has had no problem getting it into the post and the first time easy layup she just plain blew it uh, the second one uh, wouldn't have taken much but uh, awfully easy to get it into the post and that's not a good sign for Beaver Dam all right this is Wilkie out to Donaldson Donaldson coming around from that far side near the top of the key back to Salatel Salatel sends it down to the left corner for Jalka pump fake up to Salatel, back to Wilkie, jumpers on the way, off the rim, no good. Rebound for Hendricks. Drew Hendricks, beg your pardon, beg your pardon. That was actually uh, Doherty that got the rebound. And now Watertown trying to get on the board. We're just about two minutes into the first half of play of this sectional semifinal. Game was originally scheduled to be held up in Menasha, but they moved it a couple of days ago to this venue here at Portage High School. We want to thank the uh, folks at Portage for accommodating us tonight. We really appreciate it. Blocked by Wilkie, and uh, then a tie-up after that. She blocked Demet, and then there was a tie-up after the block, and the alternate arrow is going to give it to the Goslings, and they'll inbound on the baseline to our left. 15-47 to go first half, and a 2-0 Beaverdam lead. Lob pass in. Sent to the right side. Hendricks, they go around the horn. Demet to the left side for Doherty. Doherty back to the free throw line. Kicks it out beyond the arc for Euler. Euler steps inside the free throw line, feeds Demet. Demet jumper on the way, off the back rim. No rebound grabbed by Zarnecki, and she'll hand it to Jolka. Well, Watertown three really, really good looks, and uh, they've had everything they've wanted, except they just can't make the shot. This is Donaldson, right elbow, up to Seattle, around the horn. High in the left, there's Wilkie driving towards the corner. Now going baseline, sends it back up. Zarnecki up to the top of the key. Donaldson, rainbow three, in and out, no good. Rebound, tipped around, out of bounds it goes. They say last touched by the Golden Beavers. So we've played two minutes and 55 seconds of this first half. And Watertown inbounding, but trailing 2-0. This is Euler, met in the backcourt by Jolka. Euler going to throw it across the midcourt stripe. Demet gives it to Doherty, looking down into the Ooh. post and misfired on the pass. As that one 
was intended for Alex Johnson, and they failed to connect. So the turnover gives it back to Beaverdam. 14.53 to go first half, and still stuck on this 2-0 score. Jolka between the rings. Bounce pass, the quick touch pass. Zardecki to the corner, right side, three ball. And Gabby Wilkie hits the three ball. She's got all five Beaverdam points, and it's 5 nothing. Golden Beavers, three and a half minutes gone by in the opening stanza. Uh, you allow her to set her feet and count to three and then shoot. She's going to make about 60% of those. Demet, pull up Jay. It's off the rim. No, Donaldson clears the glass, and she'll bring it back to the front court. The rim, gives it to Jolk. The rim not friendly to Watertown thus far. Once again, really good shot from about six feet right in the middle of the paint. Salatel working the left wing side. Feeds Zarnecki at the free throw line. Out to Wilkie in three-point line. Pump fake now steps towards the block. Puts a shot up. Got it. She Gabby shoots. Wilkie. Man, she shoots with such confidence, Mike. Wow. A personal 7-0 run to start the game for Gabby Wilkie, and it's 7 to nothing right now. Golden Beavers on top. Gabby Wilkie averages just under 17 a game. She's, of course, a Division I commit. She's going to play there at South go. Dakota. And there's a three for Watertown. Megan Doherty gets the Goslings on the board with a triple. And it's seven to three, Beaver Dam. Mm. Four and a half minutes gone, and Beaver Dam just turned it over. They Four got on one. You have a, a numbers the other way, and a shot no good, but a, a foul. Lily Euler was leading the charge. Yeah, they had a three on one, almost a four on one, as you said, Tim. And Lily Euler, with an all expenses paid trip to the free throw line, the foul was called on Jelka, her first, and the team's first. Lily Euler is a senior, and uh, she averages about. Seven, eight points a game. Mike, uh, you've been doing uh, Watertown sports for 27 years now, you know, and I've, uh, you know, been uh, in that area for 35 years, roughly speaking. I think there's been an oiler on every team I've ever seen. That's a, That seems to be a popular name. <laughs> there's been a whole string of them as she misses both of them. Yeah, missed both free throws, still 7-3, to 13-20 and counting left in the first half of this Division Two. Sectional semi. Beaverdam the one seed. Watertown the three seed. This is Jolka, free throw line right side. Bounce pass to Wilkie beyond the arc. Looking cross court. There's Shea Marie Ashley. She had just checked in. The 5'6 sophomore. Gives it to Zarnecki. Zarnecki mm. penetrated, Good but then defense. a shot was wide right. Yeah, you're right. Good defense by Watertown to alter that shot. Now Demet giving it to... Lucy Hickey, 5'6 senior. She had checked in for Watertown. Hickey into the lane. Good call. And we've got a whistle. They're going to blow much, it dead. Too much contact there. Shea Marie Ashley picks up the foul, her first and the team's second. And the Goslings will inbound on the baseline to our left. A little lob pass in taken by Euler. Working that right baseline against Jelka. Now puts on the brakes, picks up the dribble, sends it out to Hickey. Hickey pump fake Ooh. and went cross court. Nobody was waiting for it, though. As Euler, I think she thought Euler was going to come out and make a break for that pass. She didn't do it. And it went out of bounds. So that's a break for the Golden Beavers. They'll get it back with 12.37 left to play until halftime. And right now it is a 7-3 lead for Beaverdam. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. If you want to email us tonight, I don't have any yet, which is surprising, but we're waiting on it. We'll get you on the air tonight. And Wilkie was surrounded by blue jerseys. <laughs> yeah, three of them. <laughs> she was at the uh, the left elbow, and uh, somebody got a really good piece of her there. And uh, good foul called. And uh, you know you don't uh, you don't play good defense without fouling sometimes. You know, and that right, Brewster, our uh, ace rules expert Bruce Kaufman on the injured reserve list at the moment just joined us in the booth Wilkie takes the inbounds pass double team one hands it cross court there's Donaldson on the near sideline in front of the Watertown bench back to Wilkie on that pass she's up near the center oh. circle and it knocked out of her hands by Hickey but saved by Ashley approaching the 12 minute mark and counting of the first half it's 7-3 to three. Wilkie has scored all 7 points for Beaver Dam Doherty has the three for Watertown. Wilkie whips it, cross court, Salatel three ball, yes! Boy, she was salivating over there, just waiting for the ball, and uh, Wilkie skipped it, and she was just sitting over there waiting and uh, to had all the time in the world to sink that one. Oh, we got a whistle on an offensive foul. On the Goslings. Watertown on the baseline. 
It is 10 to three, seven point lead Beaver Dam with 11.48 left to play in the first half. Alongside my good friend and partner, Tim Haldeman, Mike Tronson with you on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Justin Wilski, Ember Wilski, Jack Wilski, all part of the crew tonight. And our rules expert, Bruce Kaufman, is here. So we got a lot of folks he, helping out he, he's, with he's, this one tonight. He's doing his Gene Steratore imitation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he gets paid He gets paid a lot to say not much. <laughs> here, is, here is Donaldson now between the circles. Bounce to the top of the key and gets it to Ashley. Ashley, another bounce pass, gives that to Wilkie. Wilkie just say, inside the timeline. Just notice how far out. Beaver Dam is setting up their offense. NBA That's, three, oh Wilkie, oh, from the parking Ooh. lot. Gabby Wilkie, who shoots 38% from behind the arc, has another one, and she's got 10 of the 13 points for Beaver Dam. They lead it by 10. Just that, about 11 minutes to go in the half. That was NBA range, folks. Beyond oh, NBA range, and yep, foul here on, Zarnecki's gonna get whistled for that. She was trying to play defense on Alex Johnson. Gabby Wilkie had 19 points in uh, Beaver Dam's last game, which was the win on Saturday in the uh, regional oh. final. It was over uh, Menasha in a turnover there. Watertown losing the ball. Beaver Dam comes away with it, already leading by 10. And here's Wilkie out to Salto. Another wide open three. Got it! It's get, get contagious, Mike. Timeout Watertown brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings. They're located in downtown Beaver Dam. We will take a quick timeout back after this. Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. American Was drivers it a 30 or overpay 60? an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richard's Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richard's Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richard's Insurance? To find out, call Richard's Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. All right, after the timeout, 10.35 to go in the first half. Watertown inbounding, but Beaver Dam's up 16-3. to And full court pressure here. Watertown just trying to get it across, and they do. Here is a pass to a cutting Doherty, who missed the shot, got her own rebound, and then missed the putback as it rolled off the rim, and Wilkie got the rebound. Deep three, Salatel. Ooh, that one is off the rim, no good in the rebound. Hendricks grabbed it and then got tied up by nice Zarnecki. Great hustle. And it's going to stay on that, and Beaverdam's going to get it off the alternate possession as Mackenzie Gritzmacher checks in for the Golden Beavers, a 5'6'' senior. Out there for Watertown, Addie Moss, a 5'10'' junior that had come on for Coach Stolberg. This is Wilkie to the corner. Wide open three, Salatel, bullseye! That's three in a row and somebody better get a hand in her face because she's been open three times and drained them. 19 to three, Beaver Dam on top of Watertown, just under 10 minutes left in the first half. What a start to this game for the Golden Beavers. Mike, I go back to the first four shots that Watertown had as they take a long three-pointer, that's hard off the iron. Hendricks Ooh, got, no, call. bigger part that was Doherty that got the that's rebound and Doherty. put the rebound home. Back to those four, first four possessions. They had everything they wanted. Short shots, in rhythm, and none of them fell. And uh, boy, it's gone south ever since. Beaver Dam 19-5 now after the bucket by Doherty. 
Pass oh down my. low, and there's Ooh. Ashley. Missed the layup, got her own rebound. Reverses and goes up for two more. Shea Marie Ashley makes it 21 to five. Golden Beavers, 9.03 and counting left in the first half. Gosling's down right now by 16. And this is Hickey. Giving it now to Euler. Euler, ball above her head. Now finds Doherty at the free throw line. Pump fake, and she mm. traveled as she took off with it. Well, I think my email box is fixed. I got a whole bunch of emails now to get to. This one says, predicting a fantastic matchup between Beaverdam and Pewaukee next. Well, this one isn't over yet, but Beaverdam's off to a good start. And it says, maybe the Watt brothers will show up. That's from Rick Schmied checking in from McWanago. Sports at dailydodge.com. I'll get to a bunch of them here as time permits. My email box was stuck, but we got it fixed. Gritzmacher. Oh, lob pass tipped and going to be stolen. Now there was traffic. I'm not sure who she was trying to get it to, and Watertown yeah. comes away with it. Good question, Mike. That was a very errant pass. Very uh, lackadaisical, let's put it that way. 8.23 and counting left until intermission. 21-5, to Beaverdam leads. Goslings have the rock, working right to left as we see it. This is Hickey off a screen. Left side, found a scene, then lost it on the way up as Wilkie got there. Ooh. And Wilkie didn't have to do much. She just ran into Wilkie and lost the ball out of bounds, but they say it was last touched by the Golden Beavers. Um, the the, the uh, ace rules guy, yeah, they overruled They just them. changed the call. Just yeah. Bruce and I are looking at each other like, oh, where did he come up with that one? They I give you right. guys funny looks all the time. Well, <laughs> we deserve them. But uh, that I don't know what they're talking about now. Because yeah, officials discussing they, they got something. it right. They got it right. This email says, "Hey, Mike, cheering on the old alma mater on Farwell Road. Good luck to the Beavers." And he he says, "When it comes to play-by-play, -play, you are a Cadillac, not a Yugo." <laughs> Long live Brett and Jody Recheck. That's from Greg and Julie <laughs> Style, my neighbors. Check it in tonight. Beaver Dam's got the ball back. <laughs> I'm not a Yugo. That's good. Ooh. Free ball in the corner. Gritzmacher missed the three, and the rebound pulled down by Demet. Goslings have it. 7.44 and count. We've got a timeout, Watertown. Timeout. This is going to be a 30-second timeout brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings. They're located under the red awning in downtown Beaver Dam. Let's get to some more emails. Shout out to the Golden Beavers. Let's bring home a win. A shout out to granddaughter Riley. And uh, Mike, after these games are done and our seniors head to college, we're going to miss your fun, entertaining announce. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Alan Diane Zarnecki. Hey, you can still tune in even though your, you know, your granddaughter is not on the team anymore. Let's see. Hey, we got a Watertown fan here that says, my name is uh, Joseph. I'm cheering for the Watertown Goslings. Want to say hi to Lily Euler. Thank you very much. What else do we have here? The Eberleys, they're tuned in, checking in tonight. Good luck, ladies. Yeah, what else do we have here? Nothing better than a good old-fashioned rivalry game on a Thursday night. Let's go, Lady Goslings. That's from Eli Clark checking in. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. We'll get to your emails as the night progresses. Oh, and great defense. Yep, Beaverdam just forced a turnover. And here come the Golden Beavers still leading by 16. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. Salatel fake to three, gives it to Zarnecki on the left wing side. Now back to Seattle. Around the horn, right side, there's Jelka through a double team. Jelka bounce pass up to Donaldson, top of the arc. Now to Zarnecki at the free throw line, lob pass out to Ashley. She goes baseline, ran into a deep uh, defender and got stripped by Doherty. And then Ooh, she got Zarnecki fouled. got fouled, or was actually I should say fouled Doherty as she was trying to get the ball back. Yep, Zarnecki picks up the foul here. Third team foul. That's her first personal. Hey, by the way, Brett and Jody Recheck just checked in. They're enjoying the all-star broadcasting crew from the living room. Cheering for Kenzie Gritzmacher and the entire team. Thanks, sponsors, for making this possible. And go Beavers. All righty. Oh, here is a bounce pass. Hickey has it near the top of the arc. Driving left side. Kicks it out. Euler up to Johnson. Out on the right side for Demet. Now she's guarded by Donaldson. Here is Euler in the right corner, trying to get away from Jolka. 6.42 and counting left in the opening half. This is Demet. Up now to Johnson. Beaverdam really in uh, 
So we had a whistle here as to say Beaverdam really employing some really good defense here. And but a foul, right as I was about to say that, a foul is called on the Golden Beavers. That was on Donaldson. That's her first. I guess it's the fifth. I thought it was the fourth, but uh, apparently that's the fifth, according to the scoreboard. 21 to 5. Every time I look at the scoreboard, I have to look through a whole bunch of windows. And oh, there's a shot altered as falling down was Watertown's Drew Hendricks, and Beaverdam just took it away. Wilkie looking down to the right baseline. Ashley puts it up over the rim. Oh. It's way too strong. Hickey's got the loose change. Gives it to Johnson. Now she'll hand it off to Demet. Demet will leisurely trot it through the center circle. We've been stuck here for a long we time, We have Mike. on this 21 to five for a while. Just under six minutes now left in the half clock running. Look where Watertown's setting up their offense. They're, they're three strides inside the 10 second line, Mike. And here is Jolka playing defense on Euler who one hands it left side. Johnson up to Hickey, top of the key. Hickey backs up a little bit. Now takes off down the lane, underhanded shot, counted and a foul. Oh my goodness. The hoop and the harm. And what a move by Lucy Hickey. She's got a chance for an old fashioned three point play. Lucy Hickey about 68% from the free throw line this season. Averages around five a game. As we get some substitutes in for the Golden Beavers. That's uh, Shea Marie Ashley's second foul, Mike. And you are correct, sixth team foul. Free throws up, no good. And we have a fight for the rebound. Oh, he called a foul. And on who though? Oh my goodness. Abby Gutkinek checked in for Beaver Dam. Wow, they called that one on Watertown. And she was the one fighting for it for the Golden Beavers, the 5'11 sophomore. And the foul was actually called on Hendricks. And that's her first and looks like the team's third here. Wilkie triple team Ooh, trying to fouled. fight through it yep. just inside the free throw line. Watertown foul is on number four, Lucy, Lucy Hickey, Hickey picked up that foul. Hello, Haldi and Mike, two legends. One oh. as an official, the other as an announcer. We couldn't be in better hands. Go Beaver Dam. Sean Medeiros checking in oh, with that goodness. email. Hey, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Three ball left corner, off the back iron, no good for Seattle. And the rebound pulled down by Euler. 5-10 to go first half. Notice uh, when she doesn't have time to set her feet and really take her time, she doesn't shoot with the same percentage. Wilkie, did she block it or did it hit the underside of the uh, backboard? That was Johnson trying to, to put it up and in. Just pretty good defense, actually. And it was. And now another whistle as Wilkie was sending it into the lane. Hey, Agent 00 Voigt, Aiden Voigt says he's uh, checking in to say go girls. Our colleague and good friend Aiden with an email tonight. All right, this is Wilkie kicking it out left corner. Three ball, Salatel. Got another one. Ani Salatel with her fourth three-pointer of the game. And it's 24 to seven. Beaverdam leading Watertown, 4.38 to go in the first half. This is Euler. I mean, Watertown has only three field goals in the game. And make it four. Ellie Demet makes it 24 to nine. 4.20 to go now until the break. And there's a pass to Gritzmacher, double team, lost it, got stripped. And that's Euler coming away with that loose ball. Oh, that's a foul. And a foul on Gritzmacher. She yeah. was trying to deny a pass to Lucy Hickey over there on the far side. We get another email here. We got uh, another Gosling fan. It says uh, Cole is checking in. Go Goslings. Big comeback. And let's see what else we have here. Carrie and Jody, class of 78, still going strong and rooting for our alma mater. Didn't say which, which one is their alma mater, though. All right, this is Hickey at the line. Made the first free throw. 
And drains the second. You know, uh, as uh, uninspiring as uh, Watertown has been here, and, uh, you know, let's face it, Beaver Dam's had the majority of the uh, good play here. It's only a 13-point difference, and there's a turnover, and uh, Watertown with an opportunity to get it to 11 or 12. Oh, we'll kick the ball. Got lucky there. So it'll continue to be Watertown ball, but, uh, you know, as, as poorly as Watertown has shot, by no means are they out of this. Oh, no, not at all. We have a long way to go. 3.42 and counting left in the first half, 24 to 11. Beaverdam leads Watertown. Goslings have the ball. Demet out to the right side for Johnson in the corner. She's guarded by Wilkie. What a phenomenal first half for Gabby Wilkie. She's been quiet lately, though. Haven't heard about her for the last four minutes, Mike. Did a lot of damage early, though. Oh, boy. And here's Johnson again, sending it to Hickey near the top of the silo. Donaldson guarding her. Bounce pass into Johnson in the lane. Puts it off the glass. Oh. No good. Got her own rebound. Put back. No, but Wilkie is called for the foul. Now, uh, Wilkie did a cardinal sin there. She did everything perfectly on the first attempt. Hand straight up in the air. Well, then, then you got to block out the shooter. And she just didn't do it. And uh, she paid for it here with a couple of free throws. Alex Johnson, first free throw is good. Johnson is uh, just under 50% from the free throw line, averages around 10 points a game. About six rebounds and a couple of assists per game as well. This email from Abby Schmidt says, nothing better than watching an original Little Ten rivalry playing hard to make their way to state. Let's go Beaver Dam. Abby, thank you, as the next free throw is missed. And now what do we have? Timeout, Beaver Dam. This timeout, full timeout brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We're back in one minute. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge and 1430 ESPN. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. As a realtor, there is such joy in driving past one of our clients' houses that is now the place they call home. Be it a first-time home buyer, a relocation to our community, or someone upsizing or downsizing, we are passionate about the place you call home and meeting your wants and needs each step of the way. We sell the houses, you make it a home. Questions? Give us a call. 920-219-9212. Kladowski Real Estate, your trusted real estate advisors. All right, off the timeout, Beaver Dam will inbound on the far sideline. 3.03 to go, first half of this Division II sectional semifinal. 24 to 12, Beaver Dam doubling up Watertown. Wilkie oh. double team and tried to fight through it, but Demet just stripped her, and uh, yeah, not a good idea there. No, I mean, she just turned right into the defense. Can't do that. All right, this is Henricks. Near the top of the key, fires it sidearm to Hickey, right side now to Megan Doherty. Doherty. Giving it back to Euler. Looking right side for Hickey. Quick pass inside the free throw line to Demet. Turnaround jumper no good. Rebound for Gabby Wilkie. Two and a half to go until the buzzer. There's a oh. loose ball saved by Zarnecki. Not sure what was going on there. Man, she had a seven Wilkie. footer. Wilkie sidesteps the defender. Three ball off the rim, no. And the rebound for Watertown's Henricks. Here's Demet driving hard, right side was falling down, got her own rebound off the miss and again. puts it off the glass Same and in. Same thing. Same thing it happened just moments ago, Mike. 24 to 14, so the Beaver Dam lead is at 10. Clock running with exactly two minutes to go, first half. Deep three, Seattle in and out. And Hickey's got the rebound. And look at this. Watertown can get the deficit down to single digits on this possession. As, as much as they've struggled here. As we said earlier, as Tim alluded to, it's not over by a long shot. You got to keep your foot on the gas if you're Beaver Dam. Here's Demet out on the left wing side, giving it now to Doherty. She drives to the free throw line, puts on the brakes, back to Hickey, bounce pass into the right block. There's Hendricks, lob pass up top, Doherty, ball fake, down the lane, found a seam, blocked by Wilkie. Loose ball, Wilkie actually got her 
Ooh, got the wow. ricochet. Holy there, cow. There was an awful lot of contact there. There maybe, was. Maybe they let both play. ways. Donaldson. Older. Oh, and she is fouled hard by Henricks on the left doorstep. So, Natea Donaldson, the fine sophomore who has an offer from UW-Milwaukee where her older sister plays ball, will step to the free throw line. Donaldson's had an outstanding sophomore season, as I've talked about, averaging over 13 points a game. First free throw, right on cue, I compliment her. She misses. Uh, about 67% from the free throw line. Five rebounds and a couple of assists per game for Natea Donaldson. She'll try another one. Got it. One of two. And it's 25 to 14. BD on top by 11. Clock running with 72 seconds and counting left in the first half. Here is Doherty. Flipping it over to... Euler, and now, all right, yep, Whoa. Euler driving, and I before the drive. I think they'd rather take the bucket. Uh, well, they're not going to get it, though. That's the thing. Yeah, you can't decline those kind of penalties in this game, can you? Yeah, that, that email, Carrie and Jody, they're rooting for the Golden Beavers, of course. I just wanted to make sure. You know, I, I can't assume. Perry just checked in, cheering for a comeback. Go Goslings. Sports at DailyDodge.com. If you want to email us, first free throws up and good. This is a bonus here. The foul was on Jalka, her second, team's ninth. With 63 seconds left in the half. Second free throw, yes. So both of them are good for Lily Euler. Her first points of the night, 25 to Water, 16. Watertown in a 1-3-1 half-court trap. Seattle looking oh, down low. Oh, Donaldson, it was tipped. Pass intended for Donaldson, but it was tipped, and now a diving for it. Demet on her out. stomach. It's still loose, and somehow Demet got it to Hickey from her stomach. You're right, she should have called timeout, or somebody should have, but Watertown came away with it. 35 seconds left in the half. They're down 11. Or beg your pardon, they're down 9, 25 16. This is Euler. Cross court feed, Henricks. Spinning, puts a shot up, wild shot off the mark, no good, but she got fouled with 17.7 seconds remaining. Fouls on number zero, Shea Ashley, third, team's 10th. 10th team foul on Beaver Dam. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot in the first half. So here is Henricks, who averages 12 points a game. And the first free throw is good. And that is her first point of the game. She is a 56% free throw shooter. Second free throw, no good off the rim. She got one of two, rebound for Zarnecki. All right, 15 seconds left in the half. 25-17, Beaverdam leads by eight. They've got the ball. Another steal. Another steal, seven seconds. Four seconds. Here's Hendricks for three. Nope. No good off the back rim. Rebound. There's a tie up, and wait, the horn just sounded as Doherty got sent to the, the floor. That's the end of the half. That's the end of the first half here in Portage with the score at the break. It is Beaverdam 25 and Watertown 17. Stay with us. Our halftime report comes up. Right after this four-minute break, we're back in four minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Jerry's Automotive in Beaver Dam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Cheer. Now cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it is commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. 
If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of AirCare in Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's total care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. At Preferred Dental Partners, our core values are more than just something we put on our wall. They're something we live out. Core value number two is the wow experience. This means that from the moment you walk in the door until the time you leave, we want to provide an experience for our patients that is unlike anything you've had before. There are lots of choices of dentists, and we never want anyone to feel they have to be here. We want them to choose to be here because they feel heard, welcomed, and well cared for. If you want to see what the wow experience is about, call or text Preferred Dental Partners today. Here at Pizza Ranch, we'd like to thank our Swedish friends for bringing the buffet to America. They called it the smorgasbord, but it was a success anyway. So we started our own buffet and loaded it up with pizza, chicken, sides, salads, and cactus bread. And you can even request any pizza you want anytime you visit. We call it Buffet Your Way because smorgasbord your way, well, that doesn't rhyme at all. Pizza Ranch. Mm Mmm-mmm. Check out your local Pizza Ranch in Beaver Dam, Watertown, or Wapan, or check out PizzaRanch.com. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all Beaver Dam athletes. While at home watching high school sports, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy comfort studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. Halftime here inside Portage High School. And at the break in this Division II sectional semifinal, the Beaver Dam girls lead Watertown by the score of 25 to 17. Our game tonight brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler, Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM in Beaver Dam, White Construction, and Pizza Ranch. Now the Beaver Dam Unified School District identifies a school of the month during the school year. A shout out to the students, staff, and families of this month's school community being recognized, Jefferson Elementary and Jefferson Elementary gets an extra day to be recognized this month because it's leap day. And right now, 25 17, Beaver Dam on top of Watertown. As we look at the first half scoring for Beaver Dam, they were paced by Seattle. Ani Salatel leads all scorers in the game with a dozen points. She had four three point baskets in the first half. Gabby Wilkie also in double figures with 10. She had two three point baskets. Shea Marie Ashley chipped in two, and Natea Donaldson added a free throw for the Golden Beavers. On the Watertown side, Megan Doherty with five points to lead the way, including one from downtown. Lucy Hickey and Ellie Demet four points each. Lily Euler had a pair of free throws to finish the half with two. Alex Johnson and Drew Hendricks with one point each. 
It was 16 to three, Beaver Dam at one point. Uh, we've got an eight point game right now though at the break, 25-17. So remember I said something about keeping your foot on the gas? Watertown's right back in this game, Tim. Absolutely, Mike, and, and I tell you, it's a 180 degree turn from what happened last Saturday, if you recall, in the uh, regional final victory over Menasha at uh, Beaver Dam High School. In that ball game, uh, the, the two clubs sort of felt each other out for, for maybe the first uh, 10, 11 minutes of the game. And about the last five minutes of the first half is when Beaver Dam really all of a sudden just dominated, just like that. And they took a, uh, I don't know, uh, what was it, 11, 12, 13 point lead at the half maybe? But uh, and, and they found something in the last five minutes of the half. This one's just the opposite. Very honestly, I mean, uh, Watertown uh, credit the, their coaching staff. They've come back uh, nicely and uh, uh, really forced uh, a lot of steals uh, defensively against the Golden Beavers. Let's get to some emails here while we have some time at the break. 25-17, Beaver Dam on top of Watertown. This email says, a split home here in Madison, listening with pride on both sides. By the way, let's go Beavers. That's from Alan and Mark. Let's see what else we have here. This one says, Mike, when it comes to play-by-play, you are number one in my book, and I have a big book. Keep up the good work. Patrick, that's Patrick Boyum in St. Paul, Minnesota, up in my old hometown. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate the kind words. This email says, thank you guys for broadcasting. You call a great game. Go Goslings. This game is stacked with great, great high-level athletes on both teams. Thank you as well to Portage for hosting. That's from Ed. Edward checking in tonight. Ed, we appreciate you. Thank you very much for that nice email. This email says, hey, Mike, my favorite announcer. I just have to say, go Beavers, with a shout-out to Seattle. Didn't want you to feel left out, Mike and Ninja. Laugh out loud. Oh, and Tim, too. That's from Grandma and Grandpa, Seattle's Grandma and Grandpa, sitting right here in the gym down below us. Cheering on the Beaver Dam girls from home, listening to the golden voice, Mike Tronson. Is that what they call me? I've been called worse. Great start. Time to finish strong. Let's go, Beaver Dam. Brad and Lily, the roadies, are listening tonight. Thanks, Brad and Lily. Appreciate it. Uh, Let's see. Pewaukee leads Grafton at the half, but only by five. 30 to 25, Pewaukee. Up on Grafton by five at the half. That's an interesting score. We'll keep you posted on that. Uh, Let's see, this email says, sounding good, Mike. Sounding better each year, aging like a fine wine. That's from Tesh and Nortman. Oh, my gosh. Tesh and Nortman are good friends. Oh, my. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, Let's see here. What else do we have here? I can find any more here. Sports at DailyDodge.com. That's where you'll find us if you want to check in. Let's take a quick one-minute break. Back in one minute for the start of the second half. Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. At Summit Ford Beaver Dam, we are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership, and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. All right, second half getting underway. Mike Tronson, Tim Haldeman at Portage High School. And in the second half tonight, they'll switch it up. Watertown goes left to right as we see it. Beaver Dam right to left across your radio dial or your TV screen. Watertown has the ball to start the second half. Johnson and blocked out of bounds by guess who? Gabby Wilkie. So Wilkie forces it out of bounds. Watertown's going to keep possession. Ten seconds gone here in the second half. Mike, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of uh, defense 
Watertown throws at uh, Beaver Dam here early in the second half. Beaver Dam struggled against the half court trap late in that uh, first stanza. All right, this is Demet, top of the key for the Goslings. Demet over to Hickey, Lucy Hickey. Lucy Hickey provided some good minutes off the bench in that first half. Giving it now to Euler, high on the right. Lily Euler driving up near the center circle. Julka guarding her. Flips it off to Hickey on the far sideline. Opening minute of play, second half. Man-to-man -man defense, Beaver Dam in this juncture. Euler flipping it out left side for Demet in three-point land. Looks left, looks right. Now on the dribble, right-handed into the lane. One hands it over to Johnson in three-point land on the right. One minute gone, second half. Euler just inside the free throw line, down to the left block, double team. Trying to get it to Johnson, and there was contact as Johnson was sandwiched between a couple of defenders. Common foul variety, and uh, the Goslings will inbound underneath their own basket. Hey, this email says, wishing longtime Beaver Dam teacher and coach Carl Nienheis good health as he fights some medical issues. Go Beavers! That's from Friends of Carl. Carl, we're thinking of you, buddy. Here is a shot. Johnson mm. shot off the rim. No good. Jolka has the rebound on the weak side. Brings it back the other way. Traffic going to go by. Pushes it out to Wilkie. Mm. Long three. Bullseye. Gabby mm. Wilkie from Partyville hits the ball. And it's 28-17 Beaver Dam. My goodness. Nothing cheap or bashful about that one. Here is Demet. Jumper in the lane. In and out. It's no good. Wilkie. Wow with a defensive carom. I'll tell you, Watertown has had so many easy shots. That just, they won't go. And, and they're wide open. They just don't go. Wilkie one-hands it to Seattle on the right sideline. Tries to get out of trouble and does. Puts on the brakes. Now gives it to Zarnecki high on the left. Little lob pass back to Seattle. Over to the right wing side. There's Jolka. Cross court, Wilkie. Another deep three for Wilkie. Off the rim, mm. no good. Heat check. Uh, that one was from Montello, and she missed it. And here is Hickey stopping near the, oh, no, she doesn't stop. She goes towards the block, then puts on the brakes there. Finds Euler. Euler, top of the bubble. Back to Johnson. Johnson over near her own bench on the near side. Bounce pass to Demet at the free throw line. Kicks it out to Euler. 15-40 and counting left in the ball game. This is Demet. Turn around off the glass. Oh. Shot won't go. Rebound. <laughs> and it's grabbed by Johnson. Put back over the rim. No good. Wilkie might have altered that one. Zarnacki got the rebound. She's fighting through a double team got tied up. It's a jump ball and the arrow says it belongs to the Golden Beavers. Well, I'll tell you what, if uh, Watertown loses this game, Mike, they're going to look at the film and they're going to get Cisco, what if? Because they've had just a, I mean, all their shots are good shots. Yeah. And they just sit on the rim and they don't go. This is Salatel giving it to Wilkie at the free throw line. Triple teamed, fighting through it. One hands it to Zarnecki up to Donaldson now. Boy, they put three, four defenders on Wilkie just about every time she touches the oh ball. Oh, my goodness. Jolka is wide open underneath. And there's wide a bad open. pass intercepted. Tipped, and here come the Goslings with Euler. Pushes it out to... Addie Moss, she had just checked back in. Moss, the 5'10 junior. Neither of these teams going real deep tonight off the bench. And Wilkie just wow. blocked Johnson. And, and here comes is, Jolka. Throws it ahead to a cutting. Zarnecki layup. No, oh. but a foul. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, at the post at the uh, at the other end, when uh, Wilkie blocks that, uh, that shot, height-wise, those two are even, but strength-wise, I mean, you, you take a look at the two, and I mean, let's face it, the, the Watertown player Johnson has is, is, is got her outmatched physically, but uh, I'll tell you what, Gabby Wilkie has just really shown her presence in the middle with some great anticipation defensively and blocking on just a ton of shots. Zarnecki, who's going to play Division II college softball at Roosevelt University, missed the first free throw. She's 79% from the line, averaging just under 10 a game. Second one, also no good. Euler gets the rebound for the Goslings. Sports at DailyDodge.com. If you'd like to chime in with an email, we'll get to some more here as uh, the second half unfolds. Hendricks for three. That's Ooh. off the rim, no. Halfway down, it's spun out. Donaldson cleared the miss. 14-20 and counting left in the ballgame. It is 28-17. Beaverdam on top by 11. 
Go the uh, oh Golden Beavers have the ball. Oh, Hickey just took it away from Jolka. And, but she was falling out of bounds. She threw it back in, and then it bounced the around like a pinball. have no idea. Yeah, they have no idea. Yeah, but they got it right. They got lucky. The, I think they looked at the guy in the in the second row across the way, and he was pointing towards the baseline. <laughs> Beaver Dam's going to keep possession, but, yeah, I, I don't know, to be honest with you. I, I mean, now uh -oh. they're still discussing Matt, it. Matt Stolberg he, wants a jump ball. He does. No, I wouldn't. No, you can't do this. And now one of the officials discussing it. Hey, yeah, just an email came in here. It said, uh, thanks for your excellent broadcasting. Tuning in from St. Paul to watch our niece, number 55, Megan Doherty. Go Goslings. That's from Mary and Scott. Mary, Scott, thank you very much for the nice email. Megan's had a good game so far with five points. And I don't think Matt Stolberg won the argument, Tim. Uh, no. Just... <laughs> So Jolka on the baseline to our left to toss it in. Gets it to Wilkie. Bounce pass to the corner. Seattle, another three ball. It's off the rim. No. Offensive board, Zarnecki. It's a reload for the Golden Beavers. Four minutes gone here in the second half. And Beaverdam's up 11 with possession. This is Gabby getting by a defender. Floats one up off the rim. No. That's a touch. Another down. offensive board. Seattle. Bounce pass to the weak side. Jolka kicks it out. Wilkie inside the arc. Pops a shot and buries it just inside the arc. Gabby Wilkie, 15 points in the game, and she made that look easy. You know, back in my day, you'd call her a gunner. You'd call her a gunner. She just loves to shoot, and, and that's all good. You can't, you can't score points without shooting the basketball. We had a We've timeout, got, uh, officials timeout. Wilkie apparently has blood. Yeah, she's got to come out. Shea yeah. Marie Ashley's going to come in. This brief timeout brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. This email says, let's go Goslings, a house divided here in Madison with Mark and Alan Strauss-Schneider. Mark says, once a Gosling, always a Gosling. Thanks for broadcasting the game. You are very welcome. Wow. Here is Johnson, left doorstep. Oh. Missed the shot off the glass. Tried to get her own rebound, and she was fouled, I believe. Let's see what we got here. It's going to go on the Golden oh, Beavers. Call that a two-shot foul? Yeah, yeah Jolka just picked oh, wow. up the foul here. Hello, Daily Dodge. This is Joseph, a senior committed to Marion University for D3 Bowling, cheering on the Watertown Goslings and wanted to say hi to the guys calling the game. We appreciate that. As the first free throw is good for Johnson, sports at dailydodge.com is where you'll find us tonight. You are more than welcome to send us an email. We'll give you a shout-out. Second free throw, good for Johnson. And it's 30-19. to 19. That's actually the first points of the half for Watertown. They, they still don't have a field goal yet, and we're uh, almost five minutes into the half. Ashley, bounce pass through traffic. Zarnecki over to Jolka. Nice go. pass down low. Beautiful. Threaded Jolka. the needle in Donaldson with the bucket, but what a dime from oh. Jolka to get it to her, and it's 32-19. Beaver Dam on top of Watertown. 12.57 and counting left in the ballgame. From a tough angle. Yeah, she just really did thread the needle there. There's a shot up off oh the rim, no goodness. good. Jolka tracks down the rebound. Here's Ashley at the other end, flying ahead and pass knocked out of bounds by Hickey. Again, the winner of this game takes on either Grafton or Pewaukee in Saturday's sectional final at Watertown. It's a four o'clock game. And when we got that last update, Pewaukee was up by five on Grafton at halftime. Grafton's a little familiar to Beaver Dam. Yes, they? Grafton, <laughs> yeah, that's, everybody remembers what happened last year in the regionals. But uh, Grafton hanging tough with Pewaukee in, the, in that game. For all of us that thought Pewaukee would run away with it, think again. Oh, my goodness. Bad, I'm not sure what was going on with that pass, oh, and actually Hickey Dam. tried to Beaver Dam uh, steal, dodged but the bullet. Not. They dodged the bullet right there. That was an errant pass to no one. Hey, uh, tomorrow night we're going to have boys playoff basketball here on the radio and also on Daily Dodge TV. Beaver Dam boys against Portage, as a matter of fact. And that game is at Beaver Dam tomorrow, but if you can't make it, here's Jolka for three. Rainbow three is no good. Rebound tipped out to Doherty. And she gives it to Demet. But yeah, tomorrow night, it's a Division II regional semifinal. Beaver Dam boys hosting Portage. We'll have it for you on Daily Dodge TV and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN. Beaver Dam is, as a foul is called, Demet's gonna go to the line. 7 o'clock is the tip time tomorrow night. Pre-game show around 6.35. I'll have the play-by-play. -play. Corey Sparks joins me.
for commentary, and uh, Ninja and Jack and Ember, they're all going to be there as well. First free throws up and good for Demet. And we are, we're hoping to have a couple of games on Saturday. Got to get through tonight and tomorrow first. 32-20, and now 32-21 as Demet drains a pair of free throws. 32-21, 11-53 and counting left in the game. Ashley. Watertown still doesn't have a field goal here in the second half. That's how good the defense has been by Beaver Dam. Still, they're still in that 1-3-1 one, one zone trap. Three ball, Salatel mm. off the mark, it's no good, and Demet's got the rebound. Salatel has the 4-3 she hit in the first half. Tried a couple here in the second half already, but none have dropped. Demet, left elbow, going off a screen. Oh, she had her. And now gives it to Addie Moss. Moss finds Euler right of the circle, sends it up to the top of the key, Demet. Demet guarded by Donaldson, going against Donaldson, into the left block, through a double team. Shot is up, no good off the rim, rebound Wilkie. As That's we approach the 11 minute mark and counting. That's a three footer. Oh my <laughs> goodness, Hickey acrobatic there to leap and knock that pass out of bounds. Beaver is gonna keep possession. They'll inbound on the far sideline. Henrik's coming back in after a brief rest as Addie Moss will head to the bench and get slapped by her teammates and Coach Stolberg. Coach Stolberg kneeling by his bench. Braden went over in the left corner, watching closely from the Beaver Dam sideline. This is Ashley through a double team to Donaldson. High on the left, now driving back the other way. One hands it over to Wilkie. Wilkie draws attention. Oh my goodness. Finds Seattle. Seattle out in three minutes, looking down is. into the block. Intended for Donaldson. It was not loose by a Watertown player, but saved by Beaver Dam. Now Wilkie, as she tried to spin, it got Let's knocked loose. There was a scramble. We've got bodies all over the place. Let's see. What is there? Uh, there's uh, five of them on the floor. And the arrow says it belongs to Watertown, as they called a jump ball. You talk about a little Donnybrook there. Well, we a... had uh, four or five bodies all over the floor. But the Gossing's going to get it back. They're down 32-21, 10 and a half minutes to go in this ball game. Wapan is that over now? That finished 36-28 over Lake Mills. So the Wapan girls there. What's that? Ten oh, ten minutes left. Thank you. All right. I asked you if it was over. You said it was. No. Okay. <laughs> but don't tell me it's over if it's not over, Yogi. All right. <laughs> Yogi Barra over here. Um, no, family right. no, no family fights. No, fights no, here, no, no. Here's Demet. Turn around, Jay. It's short. Donaldson was there playing defense, and Ashley got the ricochet. Shea Marie Ashley double team, but flips it over to Wilkie at the center circle. Left side pass, Zarnecki. Her return feed was not loose by Demet into the backcourt. And I think this is going to be Watertown basketball. Yes, it will, because Zarnecki dove for it. So did Euler, and Zarnecki was the last to touch it before it went out of bounds at the scorer's table. Timeout, Watertown, brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings. And they're located right under that red awning. They're in downtown Beaver Dam, a 30-second timeout. So we will keep it here on this 30-second. No, 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 it's a full timeout. Milk has been building champions for centuries. Why? Well, research shows that real milk builds pregame muscle and low-fat chocolate milk restores postgame muscle for athletes like few other beverages. That's why pro athletes know they're going to need milk to fuel their performance. Learn their inspiring stories at gonna-need-milk.com. Brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. And let's see here. Uh, this email says, Riley Zarnecki's neighbors, they're here Rooting her on in her senior year. Finish strong. Go Beavers. The Coonses checking in with that email. We do appreciate it. Thanks to the Coonses for checking in. Sports at DailyDodge.com. If you want to sneak one in as we're starting to get late here. 9.39 left in the second half. It's 32-21. Beaver Dam on top Mike, of Watertown. I, I would love to give my wife a shout-out, shout out, but... She the technological wizard that she is, uh -huh. she's not able to handle the streaming on her phone. I've only shown her a thousand times. <laughs> Back to live action. Goslings have it. Doherty at the free throw line. 
Sends it out left of the circle for Euler. She's going to go baseline against Ashley. Then decides to send it up top again for Doherty. Cross court. Hickey. Hickey thought about a three. Not going to take it. Bounce pass into the right block for Hendricks. Hendricks to a cutting Doherty. Doherty shot. She's fouled actually by Seattle. Ani Salatel, a.k.a. Seattle, with the foul. Opportunity here to cut it to single digits, Mike, with over half of the second half remaining. And with the clock stopped. Doherty's first free throw. Oh, my. In and out. My goodness. The rims tonight have been very unfriendly to the Goslings at times. One more for Doherty. Got that one. Six points in the game for Megan Doherty. 32-22. So it's a 10-point Beaverdam lead. Clock running as we're just about halfway through the second stanza. 9.05 and counting left. There's Wilkie kicking it out. Seattle back to Zarnecki and now giving it to Ani again as they play catch. They send it left side. There it is. And a nice pass by oh, Ashley nice to Wilkie, behind. but blocked from behind. And here comes Doherty. Oh, my goodness. Everything but the finish as Watertown. Well, that doesn't happen too often for Gabby getting, getting blocked herself from behind. This is Hickey giving it to Doherty at the charity stripe. Back to Lucy Hickey, right of the circle. Zarnecki guarding her. Now Euler has it up high on the right. Eight and a half to go in the ball game. It was an eight-point game at halftime. It's a ten-point game right now. And Watertown still doesn't have a field goal in the half. Ooh, there's and foul. there's Doherty getting... Gabby Wilkie. Yep, Wilkie fouled Doherty. Yeah, this is, I mean, we are now almost 10 minutes into the second half, Tim. Watertown does not have a field goal in the second half. Well, they've had about six of them just sit at the rim and fall Well, off. and Beaver Dam only has three themselves. I mean, it's a low-scoring game, obviously, as Doherty connects on that free throw. I mean, I mean, yeah, we can credit Beaver Dam's defense, but Watertown, I mean, Beaver Dam only has 32 points right now. Well, I'll tell you, Watertown is speeding up as second the second free throw, free throw no is good. missed. They're speeding up uh, Beaver Dam's offense by by the trap, and, and they're just making Beaver Dam very uncomfortable. And uh, look look where they're setting up in their offense. It's just uh, they're just completely. Oh, there's a a steal. Yeah. Oh, Demet knocked it loose, and she got fouled, and we have a collision, and both Demet and Salatel went down. Both get up quickly. Ani Salatel does That's pick up the foul, her Water, second. Watertown will be shooting bonus. Six team fouls on Beaver Dam, but one on the Goslings. Yeah, a little lopsided in the fouls and, here in the second. And end. we'll see if that comes back to haunt Watertown when we get down to the last couple minutes. 32-23 is the score. Hickey for three. That's no good. Rebound Wilkie. Nine-point Beaver Dam lead, 745 and counting left in this D2 sectional semifinal. With the winner going on to Saturday's sectional oh. champion, Ashley lost the ball, splitting a double team. Saved by Donaldson, goes left baseline, and she got fouled. Donaldson was Johnny on the spot to pick up the loose ball and Donald, save it, and then drew contact as she was aggressively attacking the basket. Wow, oh, Beaver Dam with a big break right there. That was just, uh, oh, the free throw was way short. Yep, as uh, Doherty picked up that last foul. That was her first and the team's second. All right, one more for Natea. Natea's next one, yes. Back to a 10-point game. Beaver Dam on top by double digits. Seven and a half to go in the ball game. Demet at the free throw line. Spinning, trying to go up and under. Shot off the glass. Got nice ball. move by Ellie Demet. That's the first field goal of the half. It comes with 7.25 left in the half. Wow. Incredible. 33-25, Beaver Dam by eight. Ashley to the free throw line, kicks it out. Zarnecki's up there on the wing, now sends it to Salatel over to the left side for Wilkie, cross court. Touch pass Zarnecki to Seattle, now back. They're just playing catch over there is what they're doing. Watertown is at a 1-3-1 one, one here. Oh There's a, yep, they got a steal. Doherty intercepts a pass to Hendricks. Left corner now, there's Euler down there. Watertown can cut the deficit down to six or less with 6.44 and counting left in the game. Long three, no, it's too short on a line drive three for Demet, rebound for Ashley. I'm not sure if that was the shot they wanted there. Yeah, you can get that one anytime you want. But she was wide open. 
Now uh, Beaver Dam's just uh, slowing it down here against the zone. And I'll tell you what, give Euler credit for being the chaser out there on top. She's got really long arms. That's a good call. And Euler just got called for a foul trying to poke the ball away from Shea Marie Ashley. So you got another email to get to. It says, let's go Beavers. Tom and Heather checking in tonight. Tom and Heather Scholes with that email. Thank you very much. Cheering for the Beavers tonight from Sun Prairie. Thanks for the color commentary on this leap night. That's from Diane Storhoff. Sports at DailyDodge.com. If you want to sneak an email in before the end of the game. Here is There it is. Zarnecki, nice pass. Oh, and Wilkie reverses for two more. Gabby Wilkie makes it 35-25. Beaver Dam with just under six minutes and counting left in the game. Good atmosphere here tonight at Portage High School, this neutral site for these two rivals. And blocked is Hendricks out of bounds by Seattle. She was the last to touch it, so Watertown's going to keep possession. Low scoring defensive struggle tonight for these two teams. Watertown is down 10. This is Moss putting a shot oh. up, no good, but there's a foul as Moss went sliding towards the baseline. And that foul was on Zarnecki. That's her fourth and the team's seventh. All right, first free throw is no good for Moss. One more for Moss. Eyes it up and buries it. 35-26, the lead is nine for Beaver Dam. Golden Beavers have the rock. Ashley has it, bounce pass. Seattle right corner three, it's off the back iron, no good. Rebound, that's Alex Johnson. And then Donaldson stripped her but lost it out of bounds. It's going to go to Watertown anyways. Yep. Oh, that was close. That was close. Taya Donaldson almost came away with that one. Uh, Johnson was seemed a little startled by that. I think everybody was, and it's because Donaldson never gave up on that. All right, Goslings have it down nine. 5.14 to go in the ballgame. It's getting late. The closest Watertown has been is what? Eight. Uh, eight, yes. This is Euler off a screen set by Johnson. Driving left side, goes against Wilkie. Missed the shot off the mark wide left and the rebound for Jolka. Here is Zarnecki giving it to Gabby Wilkie. Flips it over. Seattle double teamed on the right sideline. Trying to get away from Hickey. Lucy Hickey all over. Round the horn, left side Jolka into is. the block. Wide open, Wilkie layup, got it. Good ball movement by the Golden Beavers. They went around the horn. They found Wilkie in the left block wide open. She that's scores, and it's 37-26 Beaver Dam. That's twice just in the last minute and a half where Beaver Dam's been very patient against the zone and good ball movement. Long three, and, no uh, good for Henricks. Yep, Beaver Dam, Jolka with the rebound. This is Jolka giving it to Seattle. Looking Fast. to Jolka, 17-footer on the right that's side. Buries the baseline the jumper. Emma Jolka. Making it 39-26. So it's a 13-point Golden Beaver lead. Gosling's trailing with 4.05 yep. to go in a timeout. Matt Stolberg, it's a 30-second timeout brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings. They're located in downtown Beaver Dam. We will keep it right here on a 30-second timeout. The Beaver Dam Unified School District is one of the largest employers in the region. Their compensation and benefit packages are among the most competitive in the area. If you have a passion for serving children or know someone who does, please consider applying to be a part of a great team that works together in common purpose on behalf of our kids and our community. Well, a great opportunity exists for people who enjoyed sports as participants or by watching friends or family compete as a WIAA licensed official, you can make significant income while giving back to the games that meant so much to so many. High school sports continue to bring life-enriching experiences for today's student-athletes. Please go online 
at WIAAWI.org and access the officials tab to get started today. A message from the WIAA Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Watertown has it off the timeout, trailing by 13, 3.53 to go in the game. This is Hendricks driving right side, blocked by Salatel and somehow coming away with a loose ball. Demet saved it for the Goslings. Now Euler into the lane. There is Johnson kicking it out. Demet, she goes into the lane, shoots over Donaldson, missed the shot, got her own rebound. Put back, count it, and one. Finally one fell for the Goslings. That one sat on the rim forever and finally went in. So Demet with an and one. She'll go to the line. The foul was on Donaldson, her second, team's eighth. She can pull it back to a 10-point game and got the free throw to go. Demet, 11 points in this game. 39-29. Beaver down leads, three and a half to go. Look out, bad pass and almost stolen, but saved by Zarnecki. Boy, those cross-court passes, you live dangerously. And now Wilkie fouled, I believe, by Demet. Yep, Demet was trying to strip her. That's only the fourth team foul called on Watertown in the second half, and really very a, a good foul. I mean, she uh, aggressively went after the basketball and almost got away with it, and Beaver Dam threw it away. Yeah, they did. On the, the, the Goslings. Demet trying to go through Ooh. a double team, and the foul. That's going to be a one on one. Jolka? That'll go on Jolka. Hey, get another email here. This one says, uh, Let's go, Shea Marie, watching from college. That's her older sister, Layla. Checking in. Oh, my goodness. Layla Ashley, how you doing? Thanks for the email. Sports at DailyDodge.com. That's Jolka's fifth foul. Uh, oh, yes. Jolka is. She's fouled out. And she finishes that, with two on the night. That And that jumper that she made down there. Big one. Oh, that was huge. Big one. That got it back up to 13. So Jolka has fouled out. And the first free throw is good for Demet. Thirty-nine to thirty, and make it thirty-nine thirty-one. Eight-point game, three ten to go. Beaverdam has the lead and the rock. Here's the aforementioned Shea Marie Ashley bounce pass. Seattle has it near the timeline. Out to Donaldson. Donaldson. Being hassled by Euler, looking for help. And Ooh, bailed her out. Ooh, yeah. They called a foul. She stopped in a really bad place. She lost her dribble out there near the 10-second uh, line, and that's just a bad place to lose your dribble. Seattle to inbound and finds Ashley in the backcourt. Ashley right back across the timeline. Double team, bounce pass through it. Zarnecki feeds Wilkie at the center circle. They're going to play catch up top here, try and run some clock. Ashley now trapped along the sideline, and look out. We time have out, a Beaver timeout. Dam. Yep, Beaver Dam. Good call. Braden Wentz says, ah, oh, we're getting a little nervous here. They were way out of sync. So a timeout, Beaver Dam, brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings. Our good friends at McKinstry's Home Furnishings, they're located in downtown Beaver Dam under that red awning. It's another 30 second timeout so we will keep it here on this 30 second timeout we've got uh, another email go goslings hard fought game so far cheering on alex keep playing hard sis that's from ethan johnson checking in thank you very much for the email love to hear from family members especially the siblings older siblings of these current watertown and beaver dam players Tomorrow night, we've got boys playoff basketball here on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. A Division II regional semifinal tomorrow night. The Beaver Dam boys hosting Portage. 7 o'clock for the tip time, 6.35 the pregame show. If you can't make it to the BDHS Fieldhouse, join us right here. Same bat time, same bat channel tomorrow night, only it's the boys. So it's going to be Ani Salatel to toss it in. Near sideline, down below our vantage point. This is Gabby Wilkie with 2.36 to go in the game. Beaver Dam leading by 8, 39-31. Ashley, a foul. She was 
heading down Interstate 39, cutting through traffic. And Lucy Hickey. That'll be the last um, common foul of this game. And uh, inbounding the ball underneath the hoop. Ashley will do the inbounding honors. Gets it into the left corner for Salatel. Double teamed along the sideline. She's in trouble. Ball knocked loose and stolen. Three on one the other way. Euler, bounce pass, weak side. There's Johnson oh. off the glass. Missed the shot. Rebound, Demet fell That's down. A and they call the travel. They had Absolutely. a three on one, did the Goslings, and they could not score on a three on one. Ouch. An With 2.11 to, to go. Opportunity to cut it to six. We got ourselves a ball game at that point. Well, that was a big break for the Golden Beavers. Here's Ashley taking the lob to the top of the key, out to Salatel. Now Wilk. And that's a quick foul. Alex Johnson fouls Ashley. Minute 57 to go. Beaverdam trying to hang on to get to the sectional final on Saturday. Doherty checking back in. This email says, hi Mike, chiming in on the uh, Shea Marie fan club. Good luck to all the girls. Proud grandparents of Layla and Shea Marie. That's Marlon and Barb Sherman. As uh, she make the free throw, I was looking down at the uh, at the email. Oh, she missed it. She missed it, yeah. all right. Oh, nice play, Jumper, nice no oh. good for Demet. A four footer. And the rebound for the Golden Beavers, Ashley got it. And now, Wilkie is fouled with a minute 41 to go. Whoa, oh, the, the missed opportunities in this game for the for Watertown. Watertown fouls number 14, Ellie Demet, her third team's A. Demet just picked up her third Gabby personal. Foul, Bears. that was team foul number Shooting eight. Both teams are in the bonus at this juncture. Wilkie's at the line. 46-41. And the first free throw is good for Gabby. We got a final, Mike, uh, Wapon 46. Lake Mills 41. So Wapon oh, tight game. heads to the sectional final. Congratulations to the Wapon girls. Second free throw good for Wilkie. As she calmly knocks down a pair. 41 31. It's a 10 point lead for Beaver Dam. And they've got a minute 41 to try and hang on to it. Euler driving down the lane and left side counted and one. And Wilkie's looking at the official going, What? I got. Called for a foul. So Euler's got a chance for a three-point play now. And she just turned on the afterburners, found a little seam on the left side. 41-33, Beaver Dam, and Euler's going to shoot one. Well, the Beavers are going to have to win this free throw line. That's It's uh, rather evident as the free throw bounces no good. around twice and doesn't go. 90 seconds remaining. In the oh, backcourt, Donaldson wow. is double teamed. Wow, I've seen uh, softer hits in football. <laughs> and Demet just picked up another foul, her fourth. Mateo Donaldson at the line shooting bonus free throw. Oregon was leading by six and they went to overtime. So Oregon and who are they playing? Kettle Marine. Kettle Marine. Kettle Marine Luther. They're in overtime. Donaldson just hit a free throw. Shea Marie Ashley just came back in to replace Mackenzie Gritzmacher, who was out there briefly. Next one, no good. Rebound for Henricks. 42-33, Beaver Dam, minute 24 to go. Watertown's going to need a lot of points in a hurry and some stops along the way. Demet missed the oh jumper, my. got her own rebound. Drives back out, Demet giving it to Euler. She's going to go baseline, left side, falling out of bounds, saved it to Demet. Now over to Euler again as they're... Working it oh around, and a foul on <laughs> who here? Is this Ashley? Yeah, Shea Marie picked it up. Minute, six seconds left. Watertown just can't get over the hump, Mike. They just can't. They missed too many free throws, and they and missed another missed one. Too. Euler missed that one. Unfriendly rim. I mean, what more can you say? It's going to sound like a broken record, but... They've had so many shots just rattle off the rim in this game. 
Next one's on the way, yes. Oiler gets one of two. 42-34. There it is. And that is a pass from Seattle to Donaldson who lays it up and in on the right side. With 54 seconds left, it's 44-34, Beaver Dam by 10. Three-pointer Oiler, top of the key, short. Never even hit the iron, rebounds Zarnecki. And this is Wilkie fighting through traffic and brings it back the other way. Trying to go down low to Donaldson. Somehow it got to her, even though her hand was slapped as she was trying to get rid of it. And a whistle blows with 36.9 seconds left. But the Golden Beavers sensing it now. As Moss picked up a foul, both teams are over the limit. Donaldson is at the charity stripe to try and put some icing on the cake. First one. A lot of arc underneath that free throw, and she buries it. BD. 46-34 as Donaldson got them both. 34 seconds and counting left in this ball game. Demet getting it to Hendricks. He's through traffic down the right side and got fouled on that shot by, I believe, Seattle. Yep. Ani Salatel picked up the foul. 25.2 seconds left. Hendricks goes to the line, but Beaver Dam up by double digits as Hendricks connects on the first free throw. Uh, this was a battle. It really was. But with 25 seconds left, as Hendricks misses that free throw off the rim, rebounds Zarnecki. Beaver Dam's up by 11. And now Wilkie gets fouled. Mike, do you have uh, free throw percentages for Watertown? Or well, the season that? percentages I have, okay, not, yeah. not in the game. But, but. wow, I tell you, I, I, if they're 50%, I'd be surprised. Well, and, and I think as a team, just looking at it here, they're, they have struggled at the line uh, this year. Yeah, there's, I would think, looking at these numbers, just doing the rough math in my head as Wilkie connects, uh, I would say they're, they're probably, as a team, probably right, right at or below 50%. So that has been you know, a tough area for them this year. And the second free throw is good for Wilkie. 20 seconds left, 48-35. So we close this one out. The Golden Beavers are going to move within one game of the state tournament. Nine seconds left. Demet out to Hickey. She'll try a three in the right elbow. It's no good. Rebound Wilkie, and she'll just hold on as the horn will sound. And the Golden Beavers are going back to the sectional final as Beaver Dam knocks off their rivals from Watertown in this D2 sectional semi, 48 to 35. So congratulations to the Golden Beavers as they improve to 21 and six and hats off to Watertown. The Goslings finish up 17 and 10. They get through to the sectional round for the first time in 12 years. Nothing to be ashamed of there. This was a battle tonight, and Beaver Dam comes out on top. I'll tell you what, uh, Watertown was gritty tonight. Man, they, they worked really, really hard on defense, and they, uh, without a doubt, they made uh, Beaver Dam very uncomfortable throughout the, uh, the majority of the second half, and uh, Beaver Dam just couldn't ever, you know, get them, uh, get them away. You know, it's just uh, give them the Watertown credit. They worked really hard, and, uh, you know, but, hey, you move, you move on, and uh, that, that's the key at this, uh, this time of year. It's not always going to be pretty, and uh, by no means was it tonight, but, uh, hey, those girls got to be really happy and uh, got to be heading to, uh, where are they going on uh, Saturday? The sectional finals in Watertown. Watertown, there you go, yeah. If Watertown would have won, it wouldn't have been they would, Yeah, they would have had to move it, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What do we got? Yeah, 4 p.m., right. It's a 4 p.m. game on Saturday in Watertown. Let's do this. We're going to step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we'll have our post-game show. We'll uh, run down the final scoring from this one. We'll get uh, Braden Went up here for some comments from the Beaver Dam head coach. Let's take a four-minute break. We're back in four minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. 
Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop silica for your home for the best sales, service, and selection. It's the President's Day sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed with the last call for all you Hemi Engine muscle car enthusiasts. The Hemi Engine is going away, but we got a couple of beauties that just arrived for some lucky buyers. Take five grand off a brand new 23 Dodge Charger Daytona RT and B5 Blue or a Challenger RTTA package in the beautiful and iconic Plum Crazy. For you SUV buyers, Jeep Grand Cherokee Limiteds with the black appearance package, only $46,678. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. The winter weather can play havoc on your hands and hair. Fear not, the folks at Wonder Nails and Spa has just a ticket for you. Call 887-4374 and let them pamper you. Let them chase away those winter blues. Let's talk hair. Long, beautiful hair. Shine in. Gl- whoa, 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 I digress. The team at Cost Cutters will put a shimmer and shine to your mood and their retail products are the best in the business. Call 885-0437 today. That's why you hear everyone say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center and you should too. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. As a realtor, there is such joy in driving past one of our clients' houses that is now the place they call home. Be it a first-time home buyer, a relocation to our community, or someone upsizing or downsizing. We are passionate about the place you call home and meeting your wants and needs each step of the way. We sell the houses, you make it a home. Questions? Give us a call. 920-219-9212. Kladowski Real Estate, your trusted real estate advisors. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Cheer. Now cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it is commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show. And we welcome you back inside Portage High School. Mike Tronson with you on the Post Game Show. Beaver Dam a winner tonight in this Division II sectional semifinal. The Golden Beavers take down Watertown 48 to 35. And I am joined up here in the broadcast booth by Braden Went. He is the head coach of the Golden Beavers. Braden, congratulations. And uh, you nodded your head in agreement when, when you came up here and I said, boy, that was a battle, was it not? Yeah, um, that's just what you can expect. Uh, third time we played each other, it's a sectional game. Um, nothing was gonna be given easy on both sides and it wasn't. And um, we had to earn everything, but we also made them earn everything too. So it was a solid game on both ends. Um, 
you know, Watertown's got a lot to be proud of. Their first regional championship in 12 years. So a uh, good, successful season for them. And we have a lot to be proud of, too, because now we get to play another game. We get to play in a sectional final on Saturday with the chance to go to state. So a um, lot to be happy about tonight. Well, you know, we've talked a lot, an awful lot, over the last few weeks, Braden, about defense. And your defense, once again tonight, shine and it had to be because it was a tough yeah. night offensively with what they were doing you know on their defensive side but i here's here, here's something that really stuck out to me watertown didn't get its first field goal of the second half until about seven minutes and 25 seconds left in the game um you know and they only had one two three i only have them for three field goals in the entire second half kind of a similar story in the first half i mean you really as far as from the floor held them down we did. Uh, great job on defense, just limiting the field goals. Uh, we sent them to the line quite a bit, which is where a lot of their points came from. But, again, just um, in your face, high-pressure defense uh, paid off a lot for us tonight. Um, whenever you hold a team to 34 points, you should be winning the game. Simple as that. On offense, though, my goodness, Gabby Wilkie, 23 points, and she was humongous again. And how about Ani Salta? I know she... She uh, didn't score in the second half, but my goodness, she was on fire from three-point land in the in the first half. Really got you out to that big lead. Yep, two seniors that you need to step up in big games like this, and um, that's exactly what they did. Ani was hot for us early and kept our offense going, and Gabby was consistent for us the whole game. So um, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for those two. They've both had incredible seasons, and when we needed them the most tonight, they were there for us. Boy, they uh, they sure were. Uh, Natea Donaldson uh, had a big second half. Mm -hmm for you and you know Watertown just kept you know they w every time it looked like you were going to maybe pull away that they kept you know kind of pushing back and it was hard to get a little separation there put them away and and she was big in the second half I thought to, to kind of help seal this one away for you yeah she got some open looks um at the rim for us which was huge and she you know drew some falls which got her the free throw line and just got us points when we really needed it so again you know she's not a senior but you know she's a sophomore she's a mm -hmm. captain and you know when you're that talented we need you to step up in games like this and Taya did that as well um and on the defensive end too she was very aggressive kept her person in front of her so uh Taya's got a lot to be proud of tonight did uh, you know did, did Watertown and you were touching on maybe a little bit here but did they throw anything at you anything different at you this time around that you didn't see the first couple of games when you played um I would just say they were a little more aggressive in their one through one um it was a little higher than what it usually is you usually play a low one through one they're playing a high one through one tonight so that was a little different but um Beyond that, offensively, you know, we kind of knew to look for some back cuts in their offense that weren't there the first couple games, and I think we defended that well. So um, I think we did a good job of just anticipating and knowing that we might see some things that we didn't see before, and we just re reacted accordingly and, um, for the most part, on defense, shut them down. Certainly, you know, it, it's a huge win, but, you know, it wasn't a perfect game. That's all right. Anything you want to clean up going into the sectional final? Anything in particular? Yeah, we got to just take care of the ball, especially when there's high pressure. A um, few too many turnovers for my liking tonight, but I'm not going to complain when you get a win in a sectional. Um, and then just be able to just mentally handle pressure. We had a couple lapses in judgment here and there. So um, if you want to get all the way to state, we got to clean that up for Saturday. How was the? Uh, how were the nerves for you tonight? Because we talked before the game and we talked last week about, you know, this is the first time for you being in the sectionals and coaching this one. It was, it, how, was, how were the nerves for you? It was the sitting and waiting for the game to start. That was Is that probably, the hardest part? Yeah. Just, you know, we got here a little before 5.30. The game doesn't tip off till 7. The horn doesn't sound till 6.40. So it was a lot of just sitting and waiting for it to happen. And that was the where the nerves really hit a little bit that, okay, this is really happening. Like, we got to show up and show up and win this game. Otherwise, our season's done. So, um, but as the game went on, it you know, adrenaline takes over and muscle memory takes over and, uh, I felt okay after that. I kind of just had a big sigh of relief when the final buzzer sounded. I was like, that was a tough physical game, and you know, I'm glad we got the win, but I'm also glad that it's over and that everyone's just healthy coming out of it. So you go to the sectional final on Saturday. It's going to be in, in Watertown at mm -hmm. 4 o'clock uh, against either Pewaukee or Grafton. I didn't get a final on Pewaukee. Oh, I they were guess. up, but they were Well, they were up five oh. at halftime. Oh. It was a five-point game at halftime. Okay. Uh, okay. Which I, I think that surprised a lot of <laughs> yeah. people. Uh, it was it was thirty to twenty five Pewaukee at the break. So now are they? Would we have a final? Okay, it, it's final now, sixty four to forty. Okay, yeah, so Pewaukee yeah, did win. Figured they would pull ahead. Yeah. So you're going to play Pewaukee, and I tell you what, they're uh, well, I'm, they're they're pretty darn good. They're they're quite an outfit. What do you, what are your early thoughts on that one? 
Um, they're not a big team, but they're quick, they're efficient in everything they do, and they're very well disciplined. I mean, they got a bunch of girls that can shoot. Pretty much every starter is above 35% from three, so we're going to have to defend pretty aggressively at the perimeter um, and hopefully use our size to our advantage. And uh, walk me through the next, I guess it'd be a, what, uh, 36 hours yeah. or so. I mean, you have a light workout tomorrow, and then maybe it'll shoot around Saturday morning before the game at 4 or something Yeah, like we'll that. do film after school on Pewaukee tomorrow. We'll do a light um, just walk through in the gym, um, maybe get some shots up, but nothing too strenuous. Um, Saturday we'll have to collaborate with the boys because I know they're coming in early too, but we'll get a little shoot around, another walk through as well. Um, you know, it's a quick turnaround to play a team that good, so I just want to make sure we're covering all our bases. Well, congratulations, my friend. Uh, wow, what a, what a game this was. Hats off to you and the girls on, uh, you know, battling it out and, and earning this uh, hard-fought victory here tonight against a really good Watertown team. Can hardly wait for Saturday. Uh, we're going to be there broadcasting in Watertown as you uh, take on Pewaukee, and uh, that should be a dandy too. Yeah, I can't wait. Should be a really good game. Might be a hard 36 hours to uh, to wait. He said he was tough waiting tonight. Well, yeah. I'm not going to wait another 36. Nah, it's but going to be tough to wait again. I tell you what, hey, you're playing. That's the bottom yeah, line. That's all it? I care about. We still get to play. Eight sure. teams left in D2, and we're one of them. Braden, congratulations to you and the girls. Thanks for making the trek up here to the second floor yeah, and course. finding us up here. We appreciate it. Safe travels on the way home tonight, and we'll see you Saturday, okay? Yep. Thank you very much, Mike. All right. Good to see you, Braden. Thank you. Go Beavers. All right. That's Braden Wendt, head coach of Beaver Dam, joining us on the postgame show. Beaver Dam a winner tonight, 48-35 over Watertown. We're going to let Tim Haldeman come back in. I'll tell you what, before we uh, run down the final scoring, let's take one last break. Uh, let's take a two-minute break. Back to wrap it up next here on 1430 ESPN, Beaver Dam, and Daily Dodge TV. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. Air Care's total care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. Air Care, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Here at Pizza Ranch, we'd like to thank our Swedish friends for bringing the buffet to America. They called it the smorgasbord, but it was a success anyway. So we started our own buffet and loaded it up with pizza, chicken, sides, salads, and cactus bread. And you can even request any pizza you want anytime you visit. We call it Buffet Your Way because smorgasbord your way, well, that doesn't rhyme at all. Pizza Ranch. Mmm, mmm. Check out your local Pizza Ranch in Beaver Dam, Watertown, or Wapan, or check out PizzaRanch.com. High school sports are as American as apple pie. And going to a game or meet is a chance to see the stars of tomorrow shine today. But as anybody who's ever attended a high school sporting event in Wisconsin knows, you can't have the stars without the stripes. High schools are currently looking for new officials in almost every sport. Who looks good in stripes? Anybody looking for a way to stay connected to a sport they love. If you like the idea of giving back to your community while earning a few extra bucks, chances are you'd look good in stripes too. We want to hear from you. We need to hear from you. No officials means no games. No stripes means no stars. And what kind of America would that be? Wisconsin needs more high school officials. Go to highschoolofficials.com to sign up or learn more. That's highschoolofficials.com. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show. Back inside Portage High School, we continue our post game show. Tim Haldeman has rejoined me. My name is Mike Tronson. 48-35, Beaver Dam girls a winner over Watertown tonight in this WIAA Division II sectional semifinal. And uh, congratulations again to Beaver Dam as they improve to 21-6. They're moving on to the sectional championship on Saturday against Pewaukee. Meanwhile, Watertown, hey, congratulations to them as well as they finish up 17-10. and 10, And they break through and get to the sectionals for the first time in a dozen years. So why do teenagers play high school sports? Well, some participate for a sense of purpose. Some play to inspire others, and some for the friendships they develop. Very few mention that they participate to get an athletic scholarship because they know that less than 2% of all high school athletes are awarded a sports scholarship. 
well, whatever the reason for playing, student athletes enjoy all the benefits of participation, including making better decisions. A message from 1430 ESPN, Daily Dodge TV, and the WIAA, keeping the education in sports. Hey, and don't forget to uh, stay up to date with the Beaver Dam Unified School District at bdusd.org. And you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram at BD Beaver Dam USD. All right, let's run down the final scoring from this one for the victorious Golden Beavers. They were paced by Gabby Wilkie. 23 points for Gabby tonight, 10 in the first half, 13 more in the second. Ani Salatel had a dozen. She had four three-pointers all in the first half and finishes with 12 tonight. Taya Donaldson just missed double figures. She had nine points. Eight of her nine points came after halftime. Two points for Shea Marie Ashley and Emma Jolka had two before fouling out. Watertown, they were paced by Ellie Demet with 13. Nine of those came in the second half. Megan Doherty was good for seven, including one from downtown. Five points for Lily Euler tonight. It was Lucy Hickey with four off the bench, all coming in the first half. Alex Johnson had three points, all coming from the free throw line. And it was Drew Hendricks with two free throws. She finished the game with two. Addie Moss with one. And so, Tim Haldeman, as we bring you back in here, uh, this was a grinder. This was a battle. And uh, these two teams did not disappoint. It was a great atmosphere here at Portage tonight. And Beaver Dam, they get their third victory in a row over Watertown. Let's turn you back on. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Thanks, Mike. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, just in listening to your wrap-up there in the scoring, Mike, uh, you know, uh, let's face it, Watertown knows that Wilkie's probably going to get her 20, and she got 23. But I'll tell you, Salatel with her four threes in the first half gained separation for Beaver Dam, and uh, very honestly, Watertown just couldn't ever get over the hump after that. Uh, Watertown made adjustments at halftime to take away the three-point shots, and the ones that Beaver Dam did take were uh, contested, I felt, much better than they were in the first half. Uh, where in the first half, I mean, Beaver Dam was just wide open and able to set their feet and take their time and a calculated shot, and these young ladies are going to knock those down, and, and uh, Salatel did not, uh, uh, <laughs> she didn't, she was just fantastic. I mean, she was just knocking them down left and right. And and uh, you, defensively, you just can't do that with a, a young lady like that that's, that's had such great experience at this level, Mike. And, and you know, looking back to, to our pregame, we talked about Beaver Dam's experience versus Watertown having uh, never been here before. And, you know, I mean, uh, you got to hold your poise down the stretch. And, and I think Beaver Dam did for the most part. Uh, yeah, Watertown had a lot of shots, but, uh, you know, it, it could have gone differently had uh, Watertown had a couple little breaks here and there, but uh, not the case, and uh, Beaver Dam moves on. Special moment. I'm just looking down at the uh, court here, and Braden went with his wife and young child, and I believe those are probably his parents or maybe her parents walking off the court, and got to be a special moment for him as I talked about with him and in you know, the fact that uh, as a as a player or an assistant coach, he had never been to sectionals. And uh, now he gets to sectionals and as a coach, a head coach, and his first game at sectional is a win. And, you know, uh, it's uh, that's, that's one big reason that his message to the girls even last week in the regionals was don't take anything for granted because there are so many teams that would give their left arm, maybe their left and right arms, to be in this spot where Beaver Dam is right now. Well, Mike, uh, one thing you mentioned there was uh, his wife and family, and uh, I'll tell you what, the, the time that these high school coaches spend in a gym with these kids for this adventure of four months of high school basketball, you know, and then, uh, needless to say, in this particular case, this year, he didn't spend the summer with them because he was not the head coach. Well, that's all going to change, you know. I mean, I mean to tell you, this is a year-round proposition at the high school level. At, at this particular uh, situation at Beaver Dam, in particular, with uh, positively hoops and the program coming up from uh, second and third grade, 
uh, it, it's just been uh, phenomenal, not just the girls' level, but the, the boys' as well. It's, it's such a great, great program. It tries to be emulated by other, other communities that are of the same size. It's, it's, just, it's just hard to do. Uh, Beaver Dam has done it successfully for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, the, they're reaping the success here, uh, especially in the girls' program. And uh, I think there's good things to happen in the boys here in the near future as well, Mike. So, yeah, it's the, the time spent away from your family. It's, 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 it's a, um, something you, you give up, you know, you really do. And it's, you know, <laughs> these guys don't get paid a whole lot of money to do this. It's for the love of the game, let's face it, you know. So uh, hats off to his family as well. So now it's Beaver Dam and Pewaukee, Saturday, 4 o'clock, in Watertown, sectional final. Oh, I can hardly wait for that one. I mean, I tell you right now, and we don't get to cover Pewaukee. You know, we're, we're out of the, their area, but we can kind of watch them a little bit from afar. Man, they're good. <laughs> I tell you what, I can hardly wait to uh, watch that game on Saturday. Again, it's a sectional final on Saturday. The game is at Watertown, and it will start at 4 o'clock. Now, if you can't make it for that monster of a sectional final, here's what you do. You tune in to Daily Dodge TV or listen on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam because I will be there for the play-by-play -play of that one. Ninja, you coming along for that one too? He is. I know you can't make it, Tim, but Correct. Um, we'll be there, Ninja and I, and we'll be on the air around 335 with our pregame show and – Tip time set for 4 o'clock on Saturday. Oh, and by the way, you're talking about the Beaver Dam boys. They play tomorrow night. The Beaver Dam boys basketball team had a bye in the first round of their playoffs on Tuesday night. They'll play a regional semifinal at home tomorrow night against Portage. Portage upset Sauk Prairie on Tuesday, and so it'll be the Golden Beavers and the Warriors tomorrow night from the BDHS Fieldhouse. If you can't make it again, join us here on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam coverage beginning at around 635, 640. We'll have, have the tip for you at 7 o'clock. Tim, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the broadcast again tonight. Thanks for coming, buddy. Likewise, Mike. I really enjoyed it. Great fun. And, of course, we definitely want to thank Justin Wilski, the ninja, the best in the business. He is the heart and soul of Daily Dodge TV. Appreciate him. He was assisted by Ember tonight, and uh, Ember has uh, been great. Uh, all season long, coming to games and helping out. Jack, back at the 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam Studios. Jack Wilski back there. Thank you, Jack, for all you do. Appreciate it. And, of course, we thank our sponsors. Our presenting video sponsors include Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler, Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM in Beaver Dam, White Construction, and Pizza Ranch. 48-35, your final tonight. Beaver Dam defeats Watertown. And for Jack, Ember, Ninja, and Tim, Mike Tronson saying so long from Portage High School. Have a pleasant evening. This has been a Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Sports presentation. Good night, everybody. You're watching the Daily Dodge.